Hi, I'm Mary Polchaninoff, and welcome to Sure Things. I have a topic for you today. Today, you can have a smile on your face because we're talking about happiness. And to help with our discussion, I'd like to welcome Tina Garrity. Tina is facilitator of the Madison Happiness Club. Hi, Tina. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Welcome. Welcome Thank to Sure you. Things. So wow. today, oh, we're going to discuss happiness. And, yes. and your work at, uh, and volunteerism with the Happiness Club. So welcome, can, can we start with you telling us a little bit about your background? Sure, um, well, my background is in education. Um, I was a teacher, I was uh, elementary school to high school teacher, taught math in Madison, Connecticut. And, um, but after uh, I had twins. My husband and I lived in Madison for 35 years. We had raised five girls and my last two were twin twins. And after I had them, I, I was not teaching anymore uh, full time. I was a stay at home mom. Um, but as you know, time went on, I got more involved in a lot of um, town uh, volunteer organizations. And I've always had a desire to be part of things that involve children and youth and also uh, that teach, you know, things. I, yeah. I just have a love of learning myself and I love sharing it. Um, so uh, probably when my twins were about 10 or 11 years old and they're now 27, um, I was going through that period of time where looking back now, I wasn't particularly happy. I wasn't sure why I wasn't happy. And I thought maybe I just needed to get a job and get back to work. I wasn't sure though if I wanted to go back to teaching full time. I was really doing a lot of volunteering by then that I really enjoyed. And um, so I was talking with some women one day and one of the women mentioned she was getting, feeling like I was feeling, not sure about you know what she was gonna do with her life, blah, blah, blah. And But she was attending these happiness club meetings in Fairfield, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's a happiness club meeting? She found it a little hard to describe other than saying it was a monthly meeting where speakers come in and talk about different subjects and invited me to attend the meeting with her, um, which I did the next month. And um, I just loved it. It was um, kind of like that light bulb moment that we sometimes get, you know, uh, that feeling like when the uh, student is ready, the teacher appears. Yeah. And it wasn't that I was hearing brand new things, you know, uh, most of the information that, that night, and then I continued to go uh, for quite a while after on a monthly basis. Um, I can't say it was new information, but it was just resonating with me, mm -hmm. you know, and it was kind of open me opening myself up. And I realized it was great. I thought, you know, hearing topics about gratitude and you can change your thoughts and, you know, living a life, a full life to your full potential and all those type of things sounded exciting. And I wanted to share it with other people. So I asked Lionel Ketchian, who's the founder of the Happiness Club, um, if I could do the same thing up in Madison. And he was thrilled because he's, he's pretty much an expert in the field of happiness. Yeah has studied it for years. He taught a course on happiness at Sacred Heart University back in 1999, I believe it was, and kept it going as a club, which was very popular. When I would go to these meetings in Fairfield, about a hundred people were going to them. It was, wow. you know, yeah, very well attended. And um, he, so he was thrilled because spreading happiness is his goal. <laughs> and, uh, and I planned my meetings much like his. I, I held them at the library in Madison and um, had speakers. I knew I wasn't an expert on the topic and there's a lot to happiness. And I knew I wasn't the expert that I needed to invite experts in, which I did. And, you know, people who uh, want to share knowledge and share knowledge that really can help other people are very willing, you know, to talk, I found. So I really didn't have a problem finding people. I was able to offer these meetings for free because the library said they wouldn't charge me as long as I didn't charge for it. And Lionel wasn't charging either. So I was very happy to do that because, like I said, I just thought it was something great and worthwhile to share. And, and, and it, it and it satisfied that teacher in me. I could be that teacher again, you know, yeah. introducing the speakers and kind Being of that and, facilitator. And, yeah. Yes, exactly. And and I 
also started on a path to learn because it was like an exciting new subject for me. And this, I started in 2006. So it was also before the field of happiness started to really explode in the news. Yeah. And um, now it's it's a very popular subject, as you have found out. Yeah. And yeah. we're all desperate for it, you know, and especially right now, it's such a difficult time. And yeah. I think there's nothing more personally in life than to really be happy. And I'm my definition of happiness is that inner serenity that you feel, you know, that kind of knowing that life is overall good, you yeah. know, and all will be okay. No, and, I, I, and I did when I when I was looking up uh, more information about it, and I did see Lionel had done an interview, um, one of his interviews, and he talked about uh, happiness as well and his definition of happiness, and and it was interesting. He was calling it like uh, a frame of mind, like a choice. You have a choice to choose happiness. And I also saw that he worked worked with Bernie Siegel. Bernie, yeah. uh, who was very well known uh, in, yeah. in psychology and positive psychology. So that was so interesting to see that connection. It goes, that goes way back. I was curious though, when you said how, where you were at when you went to that first meeting down in Fairfield and whatever it was resonated with you. I wonder, do you remember any of those early topics that, you know, you walked in and you were so impressed that you, you made that connection, that it spoke to you? Yes, I have to say one of those early meetings I went to at his club, Bernie Spe Siegel was a speaker wow. and um, he's wonderful to listen to. And um, so he was great. And then a, a speaker that first, one of the first ones that really spoke to me was a woman who talked about um, how you can imagine things and then what you imagine you can make a reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was new for me then. I didn't, you know, read up on anything like that at the time. And um, there's been a ton of research on, on that now, too. But I decided after hearing her, I was very intrigued and I took one of her workshops. She offered workshops um, and I, I decided to do that. And because I was very torn at that time of what am I going to do? I want to go back to work or something but what what do i want <laughs> you know yeah. and that was the type of workshop she was holding you know of uh how to figure out not just as far as work goes but the things you want to bring forth in your life yeah. and um now people do these vision boards and yes. all that sort of thing and like i said it was before that was popular so um i took her workshop and while i was at her workshop i realized i kind of wanted to be her I wanted to be a, a, a workshop leader and be able to give out this type of information. My problem at the time was that I had a fear, a big fear of one, not being knowledgeable enough. So I didn't know what I wanted to hold the workshop on. And two, a fear of public speaking, which is a fear that a lot of people have. I'm not alone in this. And at the time, it was much more of a fear than it is now. And one of the things that I heard attending these happiness club meetings was how we need to work through fears, that fears stop us from really enjoying a lot of things in life. And the only way you can deal with the fear really is to walk through the fear. Yeah. So I became determined that mm -hmm. that was something that I was going to do that I, yeah. I would I would hold these type of meetings, even though I was a teacher, you know, I, I could teach in front of a classroom of kids and I could have those parent nights that didn't scare me. But just talking like this, even yeah. doing something like this back then, I would have been probably full of anxiety for days. You know? <laughs> well, you're doing a great job. So obviously you have worked through that fear, which is I, wonderful. Yes, I have. And it's not that I don't still get scared. And that's yeah. one of the things I learned. It's not that you don't you totally do away with these things, but you learn to manage them you and not have to be those, yeah. stuck with them. I, I do agree with what you said as far as too, it's, it is a, a common topic now, especially with the pandemic. Uh, but I know uh, it was Laura Santos from Yale mm -hmm. University actually became very well known for her free classes she was offering online yeah. on happiness. Yeah. Uh, and because she saw in her in-person classes, they, they would just fill up. Students loved the topic and loved, uh, and I don't think people realize the whole science behind it as well. No, um, I don't. When, 
And, I, and I'm, I'm so curious, you know, you said you had five children. I didn't realize you had five girls. So yeah. I, I wonder what the key to happiness was in that household. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> realizing I wasn't totally in control. Okay. <laughs> you know, that, um, and that's, that's also something, you know, to, that as I read on this subject and got more enlightened on, in the field of happiness, that, um, we do learn that there's very little that we're in control of, really. Um, but what we are in control of is our attitude that we bring to situations. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't control a lot of the circumstances like COVID, but I don't have to sit here miserable about it happening. Right. And um, I remember reading something, The uh, I believe it was the Buddha said, that all suffering was a result of uh, non-acceptance mm -hmm. of things and mm -hmm. how big it is really to learn to accept what happens in life. Yeah. You know, it's the yeah. resisting it, the fighting against us that causes us to then suffer. Right, and, and that, it. that goes along with what you said about working through the fear. And Correct. it even goes back to Lionel's thought of, um, and his message that happiness is, is a choice you make. You choose to face the situation and be as positive as possible and have that attitude and work through that, which, which does help in, in so many ways. Um, as I was doing a lot of the reading, do, I was gonna ask you about that. Do you have any books or readings that you do on a regular basis when you, when you think about this topic? Um, uh, ooh, yeah, I should have uh, given you a list because I had quite a few books that I, um, are, are my favorites. I, I, there is a conversation mm, and I believe it's called grateful gratitude or gratefulness of the Dalai Lama mm -hmm. and, um, uh, Desmond Tutu. And it, it's, it's all about happiness and gratefulness. Um, uh, uh, Zen and the Art of Happiness was one of my favorite books in the very beginning to read. Yeah. Uh, Tal Ben Shahar, which is I'm not sure if is the person you saw on the um, on the TED Talk, but he was a Harvard professor and who has quite a few books out on the subject. <clears throat> and um, uh, his course at Harvard was the number one course <clears throat> for many years. Excuse me, yeah. <clears throat> and. Um, it beat out economics and things like that at Harvard, but he's got a few books on the subject of the happiness. It's Tal Ben-Shahar that yeah. I loved. They're really good. Um, the father of positive, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. psychology is um, Martin Seligman. Okay. And he has a number of books out. Oh, I, I have so many over the years that I've loved, and of but, course they're not you, popping into you, my mind. I'm, I'm just curious about that because it sounds like you still keep up with the information. I mean, right now it's got to be so difficult with no in-person meetings. Oh, uh, yes, so it is, but thankfully for Zoom and um, the Happiness Club, there is a Happiness Club meeting every Thursday night that uh, is run by Lionel yeah. and my Madison Happiness Club as well as other people because there's quite a number of happiness clubs in the state of Connecticut that started because of Lionel and um, even national as far as worldwide too. So people join in on these Zoom meetings and my, my happiness club, I send out notes, uh, emails to each month and let them know that these happiness club meetings are continuing, but they're on Zoom through Lionel. And every now and then, I i mean, I'm on there as far as yeah. Zoom goes and part of it. And then other speakers, you know, will be there as well. And he, he tries to have a totally different topic every week. And mm -hmm. a lot of it in the beginning focused on how to be happy through this pandemic, you know, because as you said, this is a time that a lot of people were, yeah. struggling and still are struggling. Well, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, Tina, I'd like to talk more about that. Ideas on how yeah. to stay happy during the pandemic and some of sure. your future goals. We'll be right back. OK, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Connecticut, for doing your part to stop the spread of COVID-19, for wearing your masks, washing your hands, and keeping your distance. So keep it up, Connecticut. We've come too far to go back.
Hi, welcome back to Sure Things. Today my guest is Tina Garrity, who is facilitator of the Happiness Club in Madison, Connecticut. Welcome back, Tina. Thank you, Mary. So before we left for break, we were talking a little bit about how the topics, of course, on Zoom right now focus uh, for the Happiness Club, focus quite a bit on staying happy during the pandemic. So I am so curious, do you have uh, topics or ideas for us that for people that were, are feeling really left out of society right now, what's going on with this whole pandemic? Any ideas on how people can try to be more happy? Sure. Well, first, I also like to say that um, it's not always easy, and that's okay. You know, you mentioned that how Lionel says it's a choice, and, and I agree with him, it is a choice. But it, it's like a lot of things, it re requires a daily practice. You're not just mm -hmm. going to say, oh, I'm going to be happy today, and it's going to fall, fall into place. There are things that you need to kind of maintain, and the biggest one really is working on your attitude, you know, and um, I'll let you know what the experts have to say right now, um, because I have been reading up a lot on that, and um, all of them kind of repeat the same things, which is to the basics as far as, you know, to eat, make sure you eat right, get enough sleep, exercise, you know, those basic things. Um, but then also things like concentrating your mind on looking for the good, you know, don't stay stuck in the negative feelings that you're having. Um, move if you are very stuck in thoughts, just get up and move around and do something different. Try to like really live in the present, not focusing on what happened in the past or what could happen in the future, because neither one are real. You know, the past has already happened. You can't change it. And we have no idea what, you know, 20 minutes from now is going to bring, never mind days from now, you know, and um, and to be kind. Kindness mm -hmm. is a big one. And right now, even though you can't necessarily get out, I'm sure you have phone calls or Zoom calls or something where even just to smile at people and, and just show kindness, even if you're irritated, you know, as, as much as you can. Um, or if you can be there to, to help a family member, do whatever you can to help other people yeah. is always important because it gets you out of yourself, thinking yeah. about yourself. And that's probably the whole whole thing in a nutshell is yeah. us getting out of our heads because we all tend to go down that negative path. We yeah. just do. Our, our brains have been trained to do that since caveman days. And um, now you hear a lot of talk about neuroplasticity, yeah. um, which is nothing more than being able to change the pathways in our brain. And they know that's possible. Yeah. And I, I've had a first-hand experience with that. Actually, um, my husband, Kevin, had a stroke a little over a year ago. And it was a pretty significant, serious stroke. He had a lot of damage happen. And um, the doctor, the neuro doctor, told us that that area of his brain that was damaged was dead. It was never coming back but the brain will make new pathways around it. And the key is to do the work, you know? So he had to do rehab and all these different things. And he's come amazingly far. So it is possible to change our thoughts, even when we feel, ah, I can't do that. Or, yeah. you know, you're just stuck in that negativity. You, you have to change the thoughts and you have to keep working at it. Yeah. So that's why I, I do personally, I get up in the morning and I read a, a little um, kind of uplifting quotes or something in the morning, first thing in the morning, because I tend to wake up and right away go into negative thinking. Yeah. I've d always done that. And I find that habit very difficult to break. Yeah. So <clears throat> you have found ways to, to deal with that, though. To, so it sounds like some of the topics that might have been recent are, are these some of the topics that were recently a part of the happiness club oh, yeah. meetings? I, I'm hearing like exercise and health and self-care. Yes, the, because yeah. there's definitely the mind, body, spirit yeah. connection. So the topics all generally kind of fall into those categories. Um, I've had speakers over the years uh, 
talk about things you wouldn't think would be related to happiness, like depression. <laughs> um, but it's about the journey through, you know, it's possible to get through these things. Yeah. And those are the speakers I found over the years to be, I don't know, best is the right word, but to draw the most attention, I guess, people who've really gone through difficulties and then want to share their stories. Yeah. Um, because we're all going to go through difficulties yeah. at some point. And um, if you stay stuck in the difficulties of life or the things that are handed to you that are sad, we will go through them. But if you stay stuck, that's where you become bitter and depressed and resentful and all those negative things. And you won't be happy. You're yeah. just not happy when you're feeling that way. So if you want to feel happy, you you have to change those thoughts and work at changing and those thoughts. And, yeah. you know, you, we hear a lot these days about meditation, yeah. mindfulness, you know, those those are all very important, you know, and, and if it appeals to you by all means, yeah. finding that thing. Yeah. That's, that, it's, it's interesting too. Um, I also do a podcast. I listen to podcasts. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're, uh, so 10% happier, happier. Oh, one of, yeah, he was one of my speakers. Oh, really? Yeah, Dan Rather, he came. I ended up holding it, not at the library, because yeah. it was a big turnout of people, but when he wrote the book, because R.J. Julia's bookseller, who's in Madison, yeah. um, was selling his book, and they were able to contact his person for me, and he he was great. He yeah. came to talk all about his book, and yes, yeah, so it's a wonderful a book. I do recommend it. I read it. Yeah. It's great. And uh, and so he said, there's a podcast that they update weekly, whatever they have their shows. It's interesting, there was an assistant professor from Harvard on, we just listened to it on a trip, uh, a drive we took recently, and it was about happiness and the relationship of happiness to time or happiness to money, which makes you happier, having uh -huh. more money or having more time. But wow. the whole, one of the whole points of the, of the talk was how if we also use time to our benefit, so oh. you mentioned waking up in the morning and it talked about how waking up in the morning and writing down a little plan for the day, organizing your time or, or another thing you mentioned, reaching out to somebody perhaps you haven't talked to in a while, an email or a phone call or something. But right. it was a very interesting perspective to take a look at how you use your time and how you can actually control your time or organize mm -hmm. your time is a better word to mm -hmm. help to actually have you feel and be happier. I right. thought that was another interesting, I, I did want to mention too, I looked at um, a couple of things on research when I was looking up happiness and thinking, well, how is it, what's it really tied to? And some of the topics in research are what economists can learn from happiness, the use of happiness research on public policy. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes through all different veins of science and society, mm -hmm. the impact and the science of happiness. I found that fascinating. I do too, because, you know, yeah. people will say, oh, I, you know, what do you wish for? I wish for world peace or I wish for, and we can have that, but it is doing these simple practices to start that will get there because it does then elevate your thinking. You know, if you, if, if you're a negative thinker, the world is dark and dreary and that's yeah. how you're going to be and how you're going to work in it. But yeah. If you can change that and look at it from the perspective through the happiness kind of lens, we can create a kinder, gentler, right. more beneficial because you you it's like a vicious cycle, a good vicious cycle that the happier you are, the more you want to help other people, you know, and the more you help other people, the better you feel about yourself. That's and then it, it just that's, repeats, that's you know, so, so it's true. a pay it forward. And I, you know, it sounds like too, when, when we talked earlier about your background and you talked about your volunteerism and how that was also probably for you satisfying that piece too, to, to feel Correct. happy and, and how that can also help many of us, especially even in the pandemic when there, if there's things we can do virtually or just helping in some way, uh, it can help us feel better too. You know, it's the classic um, giving is receiving, yeah. you know, you receive when you give and it, it's, it's true you, when, as soon as you that's that light bulb going off. As soon as you find that to be true, it's such a good feeling. That's you know? Do you journal as well? 
Um, I do not necessarily every day, yeah. but I have tried them over the years um, doing the the gratitude journals for happiness are big because gratitude I find no matter what I read is like the number one concept almost if you really want to be happy you need to develop an attitude of gratitude right. you know attitude, so, I like that I yeah like that very much well I want to thank you again Tina Garrity oh. uh, from the Madison Happiness Club and we know if we um, if somebody wanted to find out more information they would look for your connection and yes. you and they'd be able to see how to to get on these Zoom. Yep, club happinessclub.com okay. is, is a website run by Lionel, but he would connect to me and to other Happiness Club okay. uh, facilitators, and or you can find out about the Zoom link on Thursdays, okay. or anybody could email me. Should I? Give my email? No, I think that's fine. We'll have it right there um, with, with your name. People can find you. So uh, once again, I want to thank you, Tina, for being part thank of the show you, today. And I, and I hope that helps some people when we think about being happy, especially during these challenging times. Absolutely. So, right. Thank so, you, Mary. Thank you. Till next time, take care and see you soon on Sure Things.